There are 10 criteria that Sotheby's specialists consider when assigning prices to art, jewelry, wine, watches, and more. This is how we determine the value of art. So, provenance. That's my favorite part. Provenance is the history of ownership for a work. Since it was brought to life. Who that work of art had been made for. Whose walls it's been hanging on. How many different hands has it passed through? Who else has looked at it? In some cases, who else has loved it? Who wore it? When did she wear it? How did she wear it? How often did she wear it? For me, this is what we kind of live for, is to get the great stories to tell. And often, the story of his ownership can be just as interesting, if not more interesting, than the artist. Promise is something that, in a way, it doesn't matter, and yet, and yet. There's nothing more fascinating than to see a work of art in an old grainy black and white photograph. We had a beautiful work of Amrita Shergill in the full blossom of her life that was owned by her lover. They parted ways and she died young, but he kept it all his life. It's the fact that the owner was part of the artist's biography really helped us to create a narrative. The Chinese in particular are feverish when something is known to have belonged to the Qianlong Emperor, for example, that can put a tenfold value on the object. A perfect example, we really only talk about this work as the Rockefeller Rothko. It's a painting that had been owned by David Rockefeller since 1960 and had been hanging very prominently in the Rockefeller offices, expecting a price of around $40 million, ultimately achieved $72 million. If you know that this object was part of the collection of Catherine the Great, does that not make it more interesting? I would say it absolutely does, because people like context. Ferrari made a very special car called the Enzo, and they built 399 of those cars. The 400th car built of the 399, Ferrari built specially for the Pope. The Pope then auctioned the car for Catholic charities. He sold that car for a world record price in excess of $6 million. When you start adding that personality to the car, you start seeing why Clark Gable owned a Duesenberg or why Janis Joplin bought a Porsche. With manuscripts, it's wonderful if they've descended in the family of the original recipient. A letter like that will turn up from Abraham Lincoln, stayed in the family of the person who got it, so even staff at the Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum aren't aware of the existence of this, that becomes a new discovery. The longer that something has been off the market, the better. We've seen what this was worth 50 years ago, irrelevant, right? It's never transacted in that 50 years since then, until today, when it makes X price. Now, what's it worth tomorrow? Maybe 10 times what you paid for it. In the best case scenario, you can find that a painting has an unbroken provenance all the way until it's sitting on my desk and, and I'm about to become part of its provenance, probably not me personally, but the Sotheby's sale that you're offering it in. Particularly if it's associated with one of our, the great sales that have been held at auction. It adds to the history. If a work was sold by Leo Castelli or Elena Sonnabend, it adds to the history because of association with one of the great dealers of the 20th century. A perfect auction piece has a great story behind it, and so much of the story is based on the provenance. I can think of a very specific example, a Alexander Calder sculpture from about 1942 that had been owned by Alfred Barr. Founding director of the Museum of Modern Art. Calder had given it to him after a 25-year correspondence. Calder basically says, I've decided you have to have one of my sculptures. I don't care what I have to do to give it to you. You will take one of these sculptures. He couldn't accept a gift from him while he was still director of the museum. That story inevitably had tremendous commercial value. Lot number five, the Alexander Calder. But we were very determined not to bake in that value from the outset with our estimate. And I'm going to start the bidding here. Two million six hundred thousand. 2,800,000, 3 million, 3 million 4 million, 2. There's a lot of steam here. We try to let the market get excited about the provenance. It's the same story every time with auction. If we tell the story correctly and it's a great estimate, you always see great results. So, thank you, sir.